Hello, it's Helen Godden here and welcome to my painting and quilting tutorial. We're looking at C is for crab and this is one of my e-designs, the alpha blocks. So I'm going to talk us through the whole painting and quilting process as if you are a beginner I'm going to be showing you every step of the way and you can see just in actual fact how easy it is and how much fun it can be and how quickly we can achieve um, awesome results. So my design I have traced using a window or a light box using my panda pencil. Now it gives me that heavy white line. Now I can paint over that, that's fine. But the beauty of this is if I overhandle this block or brush my hand across it or the wind blows or I sneeze, that white does not disappear until I iron it away. But that white is there to help me uh, paint my design right till the end. And with these designs, I tell my students to leave a black gap. We want to have a black space between each area that we paint. That's what ensures that no matter what colours you paint, we've got a strong impact of design. So by not painting on the panda pencil, you've left those black gaps. And you'll be very grateful for those later when it comes time to quilting, because we'll be quilting in those black gaps. Um, now this is this gorgeous colour. This is my favourite Secret Weapon Jade and quite frankly if you use this colour it's a winner of a block. It's just gorgeous. It's a range called Opulence and I sell them on my website. They're an Australian made product. The rest of the colours, you can see they're a different jar there on the table, they are the Lumiere colours. Lumiere by Jacquard. I sell them on my website but they are an American product. They are fairly widely available. The beauty of these paints is that they have a high metallic and pearlescent um, content to them which means they can work on the black fabric. Now any other acrylics will just sink into the black and just look like a nasty stain. They won't, they won't work quite frankly. Whereas these ones virtually stay on the surface um, giving us these beautiful colours. But once that is dry we iron it to prepare the block for quilting but the paint is permanent. Okay, so this could be on a t-shirt, this could be painted on blocks that, you know, get made into a quilt that becomes a washable, usable, functional quilt. You could paint your shoes, you could paint anything you like with this paint. It is sticking, folks, it's not going anywhere. So I just love it. It also doesn't make the fabric super stiff. It actually leaves some softness in the fabric. It's quite extraordinary. Now I've dived into my redder than red. This isn't a Lumiere colour. This is an opulence colour, but it supplements the Lumiere range. And you can see it's a lovely, strong, bright red for the C. Now you might have guessed, it's obviously C for crab with a cupcake with a cherry on top. Okay, as many C's as I could get. Now I'm diving into the background. I've gone with my sunset gold because I'm thinking he's at the beach. He's stolen a cupcake and he's running away. Away! He's running fast, so he's got a little shadow there. So all I've done is left a black space there for his shadow. I'll just remind myself not to paint in that bit. But otherwise I'm filling in between all those shapes, but still leaving that little black gap. You can see I'm not doing a really neat job, but it's going to look terrific. When I'm teaching my students, I'm always reminding them that we have painted these. Why not embrace the brushy look? Why not let that stand out that we have painted it? It is not perfectly printed off a computer. It's been done by hand with a brush. So if those brush strokes are very obvious, I think that's part of the beauty of it. If you think about Vincent van Gogh's paintings, where you can virtually see every single stroke that he made, your, your eye can imagine the brush stroke moving. You can see his hand in the artwork. So why don't we embrace that as well? So I've used two different tones of gold and worked my way around the black background and blended the two together. I've now got the black on my fine brush and you can see I'm just finding some of those outlines that I've lost a little bit. Now you can do that with a sharpie when it's dry, not when it's wet. Oh look, I can't help myself. I've gone in and given us some more texture on the little crabby. Just some dots, make him, you know, get the texture of his shell. Now I've gone in with some green. Now if that red was completely dry, which it does look fairly dry, you can completely paint over the top. Okay, it completely covers. Hence I can paint white on black and it completely covers in one coat. 
one of my quilts I took to Houston one year, I kept being asked by people how many coats of paint, and I thought it was an odd question because I kept saying one. I didn't understand the question, but they were used to, for instance, the paint white, having to do many, many layers to get it to be white when they're working on a dark background. Now, what are those blobs, you ask? You won't know until we get to the quilting, but I have got a plan, truly. Little shine on the cherry, some more dots on his back with the white. I think he's just, oh no, he hasn't done. There's always more. Oh, a little bit of shine there, look at that. Okay, just a little highlight. Any variation just gives um, the design more impact. So now over to the sewing machine. I'm on my Sweet 16 from Handy Quilter. I've ironed this, which gets rid of the white outline. I've then sandwiched it with some batting and I'm outlining and stitching in the black with my black thread. Now I've got my micro foot on, which does give me really clear vision so I can really see where I'm going. And then I also will stitch within a shape to give it more detail, more information. So what's a cupcake without the, you know, the little fluted edge of the little patty pan? So even with your applique, if you're doing this in applique, don't be afraid to go into the shape and give us some texture, some detail, some variation with your stitching. So often with applique, people are so obsessed with securing the edge of the applique rather than giving us more information than just the edge. Of a shape. Now I've launched into some background quilting and I think I've decided I just want it to look like sand at the beach. So I'm just going with wavy gentle lines uh, and see how I'm touching into the black at the edge of the crab's leg which means the stitching that background stitching will look like it continues behind the crab. Oh my goodness what am I doing? Can you see what it is? It's C for cactus. <laughs> oh, don't you love cactuses? They are just so cute. Sorry, succulents. Is that the correct word? We don't have cactuses in Australia. They're not a, a native thing to Australia. So when I've been to Arizona and certain parts of America, that's just been awesome to see cactus or cacti, perhaps. I mean, these are very cartoon-like. This is exactly how cactuses are represented in any kind of Bugs Bunny or uh, Roadrunner cartoon. And sometimes that's what you need. It's, it's a symbol of a cactus. It's, it says cactus and we know what it is. It's a symbol, like it's an icon. And look at the difference the black stitching makes to the cactuses. Okay, Before they were just literally green blobs and now they're a cute little cactus design that looks like I've chosen red fabric with green cactuses and applique them on to my crab block. Okay, so that's, that's the illusion I like to create. So it looks like patterned fabric. Now some really messy, loose stippling on the crab to give that rough shell texture. Okay, it's pretty erratic and messy and I think that's fine. Maybe that's your specialty is messy stippling. <laughs> Who knows? But there is a time and a place for it. All right, back to the background and using that black space to stitch right into so that you can see that that quilting looks like it's behind the crab. Okay, now that isn't so important in a non-pictorial piece, but certainly in a pictorial piece, um, you do think about where the quilting lines are and which is in front and which is behind. For instance, even just an, a, a block with a flower on it, you want to make that flower come forward and the background sink, sink back. So it's quite important to think about what kind of quilting goes where, whether it touches the edge of a shape or not, because that will push the shape forward and the background back. And it's called background for a, re for a reason. It should be in the back. Okay? That's just my theory. I do like the little crabby, he's cool. Cut that thread, a few jump stitches. There we go. Gosh, I love that colour. Oh, and a little bit along the bottom there. As I say, always stitch more so I don't have to come back later. So there we have it. That's our C is for crab 
one of the blocks from my Alpha Block e-design. That is available at helengon.com. So all 26 letters represented by 25 blocks. You of course can paint it, ink tents pencil them, applique them, embroider them. You can use these designs any way you'd like. So they're available at helengon.com. The Alpha Blocks e-design. Education and inspiration from helengon.com. See you later.